intro music, but you have me and I'm the best intro ever. So, uh, welcome everybody to Insomnia versus Modo, which by the way makes me wonder if they play magic, Modo. Um, anyways, I'm looking at this draft and I am super excited to get started so let's just pop right into it but first uh let's say hello to my co-host here brightwing brightwing always comes in wrong she's supposed to come in straight up like this but she never does it just this fairy dragon really needs to learn how to make an intro don't you yes you do all right well we're here we're excited for my european japanese and late night people grab a drink <laughs> actually uh i do like brightwing but my sister <laughs> you already teasing me jamster you're such a jerk my sister got me this for my birthday and it's just like so cool it's tail like look you can like wrap it around your head the tail is so sweet <laughs> Like, how is that not awesome? Like, this Brightwing can do anything. It's awesome. All right, anyways, now that we've got Jamster's teasing out of the way, <laughs> let's get started. I'm already super excited to see this. I saw hi, Weenus. Thanks for stopping by. You guys are up super late. I feel like I should have some sake right now. Uh... Yeah, so I have this pulled up in the back, and I would have loved, loved to see this draft because we have an interesting one going on. Anyways, let's just hop right into it and hope my sound works this time because... Attack, attack. All right, here we go. On your marks. Oh, this is your team. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make a comment about the fact that it's insomnia and you're awake for my... It's it's only 6 o'clock here. It's only 6 o'clock. It's not that late. All right. Anyways, without further ado, everyone, let's get started. Let's get hyped for insomnia. First is Moto in the past. All right. In the past and the future, because I'm in Japan. It's for the past for you guys, but past, past. All right, here we go. So, before I even start playing this game, I just got to look at uh, the the draft we have going on. So, on Insomnia side, I hope I have that right, we have a Valera. And on Moto side, we have a Zera Tool. I am really excited to see the stealth, stealth off here. Also, we have the new Ana, which I have not seen played yet. So, um, or I mean, I have not, have not seen played in the uh, flip the teams. Beep, beep. See, and this is why I ask because it doesn't tell me in the thing which team is which team. Give it a moment. It's always something. Always something. Is that right? Okay. Is that right? Is that right? <laughs> All right. Since we actually have the captain here, would you mind telling me um, who chose Volskaya? Um, since we have the team captain in the chat, will you tell me they did, they chose Belskaya? Okay. I'm always interested to, to hear who chose the map. All right. So without further ado, let's get started now that we have the team names correct. Moto on the left in the blue team. Here we go. So 
We have King Dingo on Johanna, and I love that skin synergy. Very nice. I can barely tell where she begins in the mount ends. We have Roger, Roger, Roger on Hanzo. We have Hedgy on Valera. We have Savo on Tyrande. Gonna be watching that play, considering I'm a Tyrande goddess. And we have Yorel, uh, Cubico on Yorel. We have somebody Five, pinging over here. Four, we have French three, on Jaina two, doing a little pole one. dance for us. We have Wally Snit on Garrosh riding the fancy crab. Wonder if he's gonna eat that later. We have Jamster on Imperious. I'm interested to see Imperious play. BST Sovereigns on Anna and Battle Jet 8. He keeps moving around really fast. I can't see 8 6 I on Zeratul. All right, here we go. We're gonna zoom out for this beginning skirmish here that I love so much. Garrosh! Garrosh is a pro, pro minion flipper. There goes down the Lunar Flare, and Zeratul is taking a lot of damage, but he's able to blink out of there. He was really, really close, and he's still at, what, 30 damage? Yeah, about 30, 30 HP left, but able to get out of there. The Imperious Devil, ooh, that throw from Garrosh was beautiful, and that Lunar Flare was, uh, didn't really do much at all. Alright, now we've got a little bit of a tussle in the middle coming out, and uh, Insomnia kind of asserting their dominance there with that first kill, but it's the first kill of the game. So, I'm gonna start our rotations here, and looks like we have a disconnect. Alright, oh, he's back, he's back. Alright, so while we have this, let's take a look at some of our talents. Toronto went the correct talent at level 1. Uh, Hanzo went simple geometry so he's going to be going that scatter arrow build interesting interesting uh i don't know much about valera but she went crippling poison so she's going looking to slow down targets um interestingly enough the Gavel with the s extra slows um would be interesting all right uh also don't know anything about Aperius. um deal extra damage seems about right groundbreaker Greater Cleave, so we're going with a area effect. Contact healing. This is what I'm interested in, seeing this Ana playing. The new Ana. She has, her range has been increased quite a bit. And then Jaina went for the uh, also correct choice. Now I, um, regen globes are just invaluable. Invaluable regen globes. They're like a little presents that are left on the battlefield. All right. So, making our rotations here, Zero Tool doing some checking in the bush, just kind of getting out some damage. Going from support camp very early, and I love this call. These items are really important, especially for that first camp. And don't forget, they get your experience. Valera well, kind of poking your head in there, but she doesn't have the rest of their team as they're going for the camp up here, the siege camp over here. So, good decisions from both teams so far, both going for their camps. Uh, trying to get those pushing during the main phase. I played one game of Ana on her, um, and I did play her before, and the Three first comment that I had to say was, holy crap. Like, I was able to put somebody to sleep from, like, where this Valera was standing over here. It was insane. All right, so we have our first point here, and I'm actually gonna close these talents for now. And it looks like it's pretty even right now. Zeratul is pushing up to the top here. Valera and Zeratul are gonna have their first first fight here, which I'm really interested to see how that fight would have went out if they didn't both walk away from that one. Valera versus Zeratul, I don't know if I've really seen that. All right, Yorel is looking to find a good jump here, but she has to be careful because that Garrosh flip even if she's pretty tanky, it still, still could eat her. Okay. Both kind of, both kind of just soaking the lanes, but, um, they, Insomnia does have this camp still pushing, and it looks like they got another leg. It looks like they got another leg going on. Your Ralph has, uh, Chewbacca is having a little problem here, but it looks like he's back. Kind of unfortunate. Valera is trying to clear up this top minion wave, clear up the camp. And looks like Insidious, or Insidious, <laughs> that's a pretty good name too though. <laughs> Insomnia is uh, going to start getting 
ticking up the clock here on this midpoint. And it uh, looks like uh, Moto is going to back away trying to take the turret cap, but I love this aggression play right here from Insomnia. And, but Jaina goes down. She was a little too close to that Valera. Johanna coming in here from the side using her convection to pull them in, but they are not giving up their keeping on the point here. Yorel goes down. Johanna kind of sneaking in the back, and they did drop their turret there, but now they have two turrets, so two for the price of one. Yes, please. I will take that hamburger for the side guys. Two turrets. Pretty spicy. All right, looks like they're... I keep wanting to say Insidious. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Insidious. Insomnia is going to take the first point of the game and the garage flip off of the point in order to stop her from clicking that into overtime was beautiful. Loved it. All right, so the first protector of the game goes over to Insomnia. Looks like they're not sleeping on this protector. Ha 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 ha, I'm so funny. Blue team has taken control <laughs> of a protector. All right, and uh, Jaina goes top, and Im Imperius goes bottom. They're going to keep choking that one, and they are almost 10, so I do like this decision. Can I come in here? I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing um, Anna when she gets her alt here. Looks like they're going to be able to take out the wall here, and they did get a good a bit amount in the middle too, and they got 10, and that's the important point. Now that they have 10, they're able to be super aggressive, take all of these camps, and basically get their piece of the battlefield. Also, I want to note that this well is still standing here, but the wall is open, and they're possibly be able to take that well from the next battle. All right, so kind of going back into the lull in the middle of the storm. Um, Moto really wants to look towards getting 10 here. They want to try to avoid a team fight. And nice throw off of the garage, but it is Johanna, and she's going to walk away. I, I don't even know if she needed to pop that in the top of but really don't want to get a push here when they're so close to 10. And there's a beautiful void prison. Are we going to find the Ring of Frost follow-up? We are, and it's... Really good, Tarani was able to get out of it though, but Joe is not. And she goes down even though she's the tanky tank. They didn't have 10 yet. Uh, Ulel is trying to get them, oh, they did finally get 10. And I forgot to share the talent, so let's look at the ultimates here. We have Angelic Armaments from Imperius. Um, I actually have not seen the other one taken very often. Warlord Challenge from Garros. Garrosh, Void Prison from Zeratul, Metal Boost. Oh, there goes the uh, Dragon's Arrow, and it's a smack onto the Zeratul, and he goes down. Jaina is taking a lot of damage back here, and she's not able to get out. Looks like right now we kind of just want to escape, and Moto is turning this around. Garrosh is taking a lot of damage. He still has that turret there. Is he, is he going to be able to get out? It is a Garrosh, and he's really tanky, but it does not look like it. But he did drop the turret before he went down, so at least he was not, they were not able to get that value out of it. But this is a really, really good starting point for Moto to get a comeback. And this point is not spawning yet, but they're probably going to be able to come down and take these camps, clear out these lanes, get the push back onto the other side. But it is early game, so Garrosh is going to be back in three seconds. Like I said, the top point is not up yet, so they have plenty of time to get back in this. Now let's finish. We have Nano Boost um, and Ring of Frost. So they're looking to have a Void Prison into a Ring of Frost combo here and also a flip into a Taunt. A new terminal will be ready shortly. Um, void, void Prison Ring of it. Zeratul with the Jaina is a beautiful, perfect combo. Actually, very easy to execute. All right, and on the side of Moto, we have Shadow Stock by Tulande. We have Dragon's Arrow from Hanzo. We have Smoke Bomb from Valera, so it looks like she's looking for a little extra protection there. We have Blessed Shield from Johanna, and we have Ardent Defender from Yugzal. Secure it to activate the protection. The interesting thing with the Scatter Arrow build and the Valera is they really have a lot of poke damage. They have like a bursty sort of poke. He didn't 
mess up the first time. You got it the first time. Me and my friend play Zeratul with Jaina. Wait, compared to some of the other wombo combos that I've seen people try to do, the Zeratul Void Prison with the Jaina is a relatively simple one. <laughs> Probably harder for the Zero Tool than the Jaina. I'm usually on the Jaina side of it, so I can't tell. There goes the Dragon Arrow, and the Lunar Flare comes down, but it's in serious, and he takes pretty much no damage. But Zero Tool gets caught out there, and he goes down. Ring of Frost going down, but that Ardent Defender is blocked, and she just heals up that damage. But, but Insomnia was able to get that protector. Even though Moto got the first kill, Insomnia was able to grab that protector, jump in it, and they've got themselves a smacking, whacking robot. I forgot what those things are called. The ones that you put on top of it. And they go whack, 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 whack. <laughs> Alright, and they are going to keep it up. Anna is getting dove upon in the back here, but that shield from the protector comes down, keeping her alive. I love the use of the shield from the protector there. Anna can't heal herself? Well, let's uh, let's heal her with a big giant robot, shall we? All right, looks like the is coming in here and we have a stealth. No, nope, they just walked right past each other, didn't even bother. And Valera is kind of on the wrong side of the hood. Dragon's arrow goes down, giving a beautiful stun on the Anna and she is going down. Void prison in the back on the three squishies in the back, but Jaina, I don't think, is able to get back there. Yorel is keeping her off and gets the kill, but is it going to be worth it? She has 100 HP left, and she is able to walk away as the Zeratul is not. The Zeratul gets away. Everyone is so super low, but we've only two kills to zero right now. That Valera play, going for that Ana in the back, and the Yorel just staying on top of it and able to get away. That was an awesome, awesome Valera fight, Valera play there. One thing about Ana is if uh, if you can get to her, you can keep her off that healing. It you can't really heal when somebody's in your face. Stabbing you. Probably not a very pleasant feeling either. Once again, it was a really good Void Prism from Zeratul, but Jaina was getting dove upon by the Yorel, so the Yorel did her job of keeping the, the damage out of it there. And I'm kind of at a sort of... Both of them are going to be at 16 about the same time, and they're all kind of patrolling around this support camp here. Garrosh goes in, but no flips to be had. Yorel's kind of looking for the bait. Zeratul goes in, Imperius the Impale, and they got a good chunk of damage on that Yorel, but she's going to be able just to be able to heal it up. Scatter arrows going down from Hanzo, trying to clear up this top Merc camp. And they're waiting on this their camp here, which... I like the decision to try to get it while the bottom C point is up. And they're able to take this, but are they able to get the, They are able to get the point, and he grabs the support item, which can make it take it. There goes down the void prison. Where's the ring of frost? Ring of frost is way too early, or Zeratul did not click it, but he's actually taking a lot of damage in the back here. But the top goes down, and Johanna goes down. Imperius goes in, and Yorel gets thrown over the wall, but she has Iron Defector and a jump, so she's just going to be able to heal up that damage. Is she able to get away? Silence goes down on the Imperius, and he is out! 3, 2, 1, right now! And they are getting super close to that wall. Garrosh is walking away with about 300 HP, and that was a fantastic battle. Terminal activated. Take control of it. <clears throat> the only reason I can say that is because you're in chat and therefore it gives me license to tease you. Alright, so Tyrande is standing on the point here. Probably going to be able to get this 
but Zeratul is up in a second. He's up now. So if they want to come down here and try to try to get this protector back, they're able to do that. And Veros flipping over the Yavel. It was a really nice clip and follow-up, but Yavel, once again, just super tanky, has that heal and that, uh... But she's going to... She actually has about... She did pop her Ardent Defender here, so she is going to have that down for another about 40 seconds before that is back up. Alright, so it looks like they are able to get down here, and both teams are plenty far away from 20, so they don't have to worry about that. And Garrosh does still have that healing pulse, which can definitely make or break a team fight here. Both kind of just shallowly walking on this point, doing some damage. Um, both of the lanes are, the top lane is kind of pushed out for the blue team, but it's really probably not going to get very much. Looks like they're setting up for a defense on point here. Valera coming in here, trying to sneak around, and silence goes down in the garage, but I really think that was kind of just a warning shot, didn't really do much follow-up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jamester. Alright, and the battle begins. Dragon arrows go down and complete a whiff on the dragon arrow, but the silence goes down on here. Valyra taking kind of a lot of damage. Jaina stasis ice block and she is not going to have a place. Void prison goes down. Bring a frost in an inopportune time. Valyra taking a lot of damage though. That healing pulse is doing a lot of work. Sarah goes down to Mane as only 50 health. Is she able to get out? Well, she's able to get out, but Johanna's not able to get out. And Yorel is stuck on the fun conveyors of doom, is what I like to call those. But Anna is getting taken down by this Valera in the back, and she's not able to get out. Tarane now stuck on the conveyors of death. Why would you go that way? Walk the other way. Don't walk it. It's like trying to walk up and up a down escalator. Stop that nonsense. <laughs> and Valera is still there, but she's stealthy, but... She's able to get away, and they're able to grab the protector again. Somehow, winning the war, losing some battles, but winning the war. Blue team has taken control of a protector. Also, I'm I am a hundred percent able to tease you. What are you gonna do about it? Ha ha ha! You'd have to come all the way to Japan to stop me. <laughs> Red team has destroyed the fort. Uh, I'm really liking the tank play out of, oh, once again, I to call you guys insidious, Insomnia. The tanks are doing heck of a lot of work. And here comes the protectors. Now these protectors can really try to start the late game. Also, both teams are 20, so let's take a look at their ultimates after we, after this protector goes back there. So. Uh, Tarande went an interesting choice here. Shooting a star. Every 8th base attack, the Tarande has a Lunar Flare for free out of random enemy. Hmm. Alright, uh, we have play of the game. So Hanzo is able to travel through space and time on his Dragon Arrow. We have a Rupture. Increase Geralt's damage over time by 100%. We have Indestructible. And Yorel's still deciding on her last talent there. And on... <laughs> Insomnia's side, we have Heavenly Host. Titanic Might now throws two enemies. Hmm. We have Shadow Mending Heal for 60% of spell damage dealt to heroes. Interesting. We have... Armored Stance, increased Strikes damage by 50% while aimed on the sites is active, and Ice Blink. Oh! Don't you dare. Don't you know that any kind of publicity is publicity? <laughs> Yeah.
You can post that I'm scared of sake. Because <laughs> I had some weird sake once and, and have not been able to have it since. Alright, so 20 versus 20. Both uh, on the side of Insomnia, we have all of their forts up. Um, all the forts are down on the side of Moto. So they're going to be getting Kata advantage. But it's a pretty even game, actually. This URL has to be a little careful here because one throw from the garage could still do me. You know, she does have an escape. Oh, she goes in for the Imperius that jumps out right away. They're kind of just um, playing with each other here. Jump there, a flip there, and they're going to start heading back to clear this bottom lane here. Kind of got a, uh, a, a little what's it called, stalemate. And Jess and everyone's kind of looking for that pick here. Oh, these two are getting rotated on, and there goes the impale onto Johanna, and the Valera comes out with the stuff bombs, goes down, there's the Void Risen. Do we have a follow-up with the Ring of Frost? There we go! That is a good Ring of Frost follow-up, and the, the Healing Pulse has been dropped. Cubeco is taking a lot of damage here, and I think she popped her Ardent Defender, did she already did? She goes down, and this could be a keep from the side of, this could be a keep on the side of Insomnia. Mm, they back up, they decide that they want to get the, all of the items instead and go for the protector, which is not a bad decision. Play it safe, make sure to get, and with the protector, they could possibly finish the game. Power routed to the terminal. Control it, and you can These minions the are protector. starting to whack on that keep down there, so that's good. Looks like they might be able to get that. And unfortunately, Yorel is down for 30 seconds, so they're not going to be able to do much about that, so... Just gotta come down here, clear this wave, try to push it back out, make sure that it doesn't get the keep to put even more catapult pressure on that. Uh, the items being picked up from Team Insomnia here. Moto is looking to get back into this game, but they still have nine seconds until your is popping up. And Valera is getting pretty. There it goes down, Dragon Arrow landing on him, and that is a beautiful But The throw from Garrosh is able to get that Ana out of dangerous position, and now she is. She's still really, really low, and Valera is looking for that kill, and she's able to find it, but Tirane is taking a lot of damage in the back here. There goes down the Warlord Challenge, and is able to get a kill on the Valera, but Johanna does have Indestructible, so she is able to get out of there just fine, and Unstoppable, he goes for the Impale, but is not able to get it, and Jaina! Jaina goes down thanks to Vigel hopping on her. There goes down the Lunar Flare. Imperius is taking a lot of damage. Is he able to get out of there? There goes down the Void Prison, but I don't really... He doesn't I have much follow-up there. Is he able to... Does he have a Bleak? He does have a Bleak, and they're able to walk away. But now, three went down on the side of Insomnia, and one on the side of Moto. So Moto was able to find the pick on the Ana and get back Red in this game. Unfortunately, while that team fight was going at down, these minions and that Kata came up top and said, we are taking this for us. And this is not looking good either down here. They're about to have no keeps, but they're but if they can get this protector, they might be able to walk through here and get a keep of their own. We still have about 18 seconds before the entire Insomnia team is back up and ready to go. This lane is starting to push up though, so they've got to be watch out for that. Valera's gonna come down here and clear this lane, but they've gotta be careful for that. Those catas can really deal a lot of damage. Blue team's core is under attack. Alright, so Jaina is back up and able to come back into this fight. They goes down the grenade from Ana. Valera did clear one lane down there, but she's coming back in order to get this fight. If they do lose this battle, they lose the game, so... Uh, kind of in a little bit of a checkmate here. But, um, Valera going for that backline. Valera has been on that Ana pretty much all game. 
Garrus taking a lot of damage here, but the sun goes against the wall, and Shadow Staff goes down. There goes the Dragus Arrow. Ana getting, Ana getting attacked here by the back by Valera, but the tanks say no and come down, but the protector does go on to the side of Moto, but Void Prison pops down here to stop them from getting in the protector, or I'm not really sure there. Ana goes down in the back. Urel is staying on top of that Ana, but Imperius is able to get to Ronde, so both heels are down. Johanna did pop in that protector though, and that protector is going to deal a heck of a lot of damage, so they need to get out of there ASAP, get back, and defend. They do have the top lane pushing. So, they are not, and actually it looks like Zerich Fuller is going to, no, he's going to come back here in hard. They do still have Imperius. Imperius goes down due to the laser beam of Heck. I don't know why I just said Heck. Blue team has destroyed the fort. Was that, are you Imperius? It is kind of embarrassing death, but you know what though, it's less embarrassing than dying to a mercenary camp. All right, looks like they're gonna be able to get in here, but Yuval did, Yuval did go back in order to clear that top lane, so looks like they're going to be able to get this keep, but are they gonna be able to get much more? I don't think so, so they're, they're just gonna come back, use the rest of the projector in order to probably go bot, push out that lane. I would actually go top in order to push that out, because it is starting to take Kata damage. It the Kata's actually did, 15% of that core, so... Laser beam of heck! I don't know why I went all PG. <laughs> I really don't know why I went PG there. <laughs> it's not like children are watching me. I taught children today, so maybe that's why. <laughs> I actually don't know what the, the actual name is it. Uh, and they did go top, so they listened to their in the future caster. They listened to the voice of their future caster. <laughs> Test concluded. Now we'll make adjustments accordingly. Man, look at that cat going. You do not underestimate those, my friend. My friends. Alright, looks like Moto is going to go for the support camp here, but Imperius is looking to the king and Valera is just stopping her. That Ana has to watch out for that Valera because she has been on her all game. Oh, there goes down the void prison. Jaina here for the follow up, and it's a nice ring of frost. Tarande taking a lot of damage, and that's the target you want to go for. Tarande and Hanzo there in the back. Zero Tool goes in, but the healing pulse was dropped. Ardent Defender gets popped. Lunar Flare onto the Zero Tool, but he's able to blink away. Ana taking so much. Oh, that was Jaina actually taking so much damage in the back there. The stun goes down, and it's just a bloodbath going on here, but Ana is sitting in the corner here, able to heal them. That's the beautiful thing about Ana. She can heal from anywhere. So it's actually just a one for one there. Hanzo attack. and Jaina and Catapult's hitting that tower, so they're going to be aggressive here and take. <laughs> I believe it, actually. Yurel getting flipped and stunned by the Imperius, and she is down. Her curiosity killed the cat. I don't think she's a cat, but. Curiosity killed the cat, and I don't think she has nine lives. Maybe she does. Maybe the goat people from Warcraft do have nine lives. And I just don't know about it. <laughs> Alright. So, I like this decision by Insomnia to get this last, to get this keep down. Uh, Yorel is not going to be back for 34 seconds. So they have plenty of time in order to get this. Hanzo is coming back up here in about one second though. Jaina went back to base in order to clear that middle here. And oh my gosh, this next protector is going to rip through anything. So this next protector is probably going to be game. Uh, right now, I gotta gear up, but... Once again, if the if the battle goes too long, these like I said, these catapults are going to start shredding. So gotta be careful. 
29 minute game. 29 minute protector is going to eat your forts for dinner. Maybe not dinner because it'd probably be faster than dinner. Dinner sometimes, maybe just snack. <laughs> This is a really it's good done. game, by the way. You did not disappoint. The terminal and bring in oh my gosh, the that Valera. She's literally getting pushed by the Imperius. Oh, that's a beautiful stab onto the Valera. But it really goes down the Dragon Arrow. And that Jaina is not in a very good position. But the Ice Block goes down before the Lunar Flare is able to go off. Yavel gets thrown out of there. Arden Defender is popped. Healing pulls. Great. Taking a lot of damage. There's a down the frost. Able to get on that Hanzo, but there's really not much follow up. Hanzo goes down face to Zeratul. Are they able to get more? If they're able to get more here, they might be able to just end it and say, screw you, breakfast eating protector. Johanna is taking a lot of damage. Does Garish have his flip up? He does have his flip up towards the Zeratul, but Zeratul is looking at Tarambe. Valera is going to get away and all they have to do is walk around here go to the core and say goodbye to that breakfast eating protector they don't even need it they've got everything they need in order to finish this game i don't think valera and johanna are going to be able to do much against that the zeratul getting on top of that hanzo in the back there Keeping that damage off of the Ana. I really love this 3%, 1%, and done. I have to say that I love how Insomnia adjusted. Notice that the Valera was going after their Ana in the back, and the Urel was also like really attacking that Ana in the back, and they adjusted. They they kind of kept a little like you know, those goose formations, like a V formation around the Ana there. So the Valera had a much harder time getting in. Um, I like that, I liked their, it was really good play from both of them. That Valera was, that was Valera was pretty scary, actually. Oh, thank you. How do I get rid of that? I was, I've always been wondering how I get rid of that stupid thing. <laughs> Control shift plus O. So much better. So much better. <laughs> oh, every every new cast I do, somebody tells me a new thing that just makes life insanely better. All right. Well, that was fun. That was a really fun game. I loved seeing the Zeratul versus the Valera there. The Valera was actually kind of terrifying. That Ana sometimes just went exploded, but I loved, I loved the adjustments, and that's that's what's important, right? The in, being able to adjust, being able to learn as you're playing. Um, well, uh, you know, without so. According to Jamster, who is in here, Moto picked the first map, which was Laskaya, and the second map we're going to is going to be Tomb. So, let me just find, exit this, go, I really like Laskaya. I like maps that have a clear, easy, understand, easy understandable objective. Stand on the point, get a giant robot. Giant robot smashes things. Oh, they did? So you got first pick each time? Oops. I've only played on a team once. And I tend to, tended to like first picking more. All right, guys, don't listen to Jamster. He doesn't know what his own team did. That's for you. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Here we go. Let me load up Towers of Doom. Okay. Wait. Why are you guys now on the blue side? 
You guys are messing with me. Messing with my head here. Now I gotta flip this. Boop. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so do you mind telling me who your first pick was before we get into this? So we have, um, actually, let's... Prepare yourself for battle, heroes. Okay, so let's hop right into it. Here we go. Boop. So, oh wait, no, you, you guys, uh, you guys chose, so... We had a swap of colors here. So now uh, Insomnia is on the blue side and Moto is on the red side. So um, Jamster, can you tell me, um, you chose the map. So I'm guessing first pick was either Kalthos or Garrosh. I'm guessing first pick was either Kalthos or Garrosh. Oh, they first picked Zara. Interesting. And they banned Anna. Banned Anna. I, I really love the drafting portion. That's actually my favorite part of any... Um, I love that part. It's it's really interesting. Anyways, um, I let's let's get right into it. Oh, into Garage Lucio. Interesting, interesting. Um, I I actually love Lucio and I love the Lucio versus Jaina specifically mostly because I play a lot of Jaina and the break it down versus Ring of Frost is a pain in the butt. I usually go water elemental versus the Lucio because of that specific reason. Also if you get the frost on the Lucio you just go cone of cold, freeze him, blizzard him, and he can't move anywhere. But yeah, I really like the Lucio, and I've been seeing kind of a comeback in the Nexus with the Lucio, so it'll be fun to see. Although, I already know how this game ends, <laughs> but we're going to pretend that I don't. Exactly. Just pick Elemental. You know, that's a Jaina, my girl, my girl Jaina, let's just, um, she has been through so many changes, but she's, like, yeah, she's a, she's a great hero. Ring of Frost, Elemental, both awesome. All right, anyways, enough of me gushing over my girls. Tamanda and Jaina are my girls. <clears throat> and Chromie. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense, Jamster. Okay, so... Without further ado, let us pop into game number two on Towers of Doom. I also really like this map because I like the comeback mechanic. All right, here we go. So I think Jason said Control Shift O. Control Shift O. There we go. No more of that. And control one for my talents. Yay, look at I'm blossoming into a beautiful caster. All right. On the blue side, we have a color swap. Apparently, they didn't like the, the red begins. side. We have Insomnia seconds. with Battle Jet 86 i on Jaina sporting his golden Five, chicken. Four, we have BST Sovereign on the Mount Furion. We have one. Jamster on the Dahaka with the Fight. correct skin. Thank you. We have Wally Smith on jo Johanna riding that crab. And we have French on Rainer. I've been seeing a lot of Rainer picks, actually. Okay. And on the red team, we have King Dingo on Garrosh Savo. On Lucio, Roger. Roger, Roger, Roger on uh, Hanzo. Again, he must like Hanzo. And we have Hedgy on KT. And Q Becco on Zeratul. Interesting, we had a little roll swap there. Q Becco played the UL last game and now he's playing the Zeratul. The lucky one. 
It's best. It's the best. We right, got a nice three person stun from Garage, but really that's about it. That's my favorite, the Haka skin. Actually, I like the camel one too. Alright, so we have our beginnings here. We're gonna go for that camp, early camp here. Looks like uh, Insomnia is going to respond with the same. Alright, I'm gonna take this down now. You know what talent you got. Alright, uh, Dahaka versus Sandy on the top. Oh, that would be interesting. I really like a Dahaka pick on this map. Actually, you know, I like Dahaka pick on any map, but um, he's really good for grabbing that top shrine and then burrowing you down to the bottom shrine. So that's how this team out there. Alright, so bottom camp picked up from both teams. Not much happening right now. Just a uh, little about the same here. The garage going in for an uh, aggressive look here. Yeah, although I see more aggressive garages for sure. And he's taking a lot of damage from that Rainer, but uh, shield just going up and pumpkins aren't really going to be able to get much here. This little guy might be able to get something if he's left unanswered, but looks like we're just going to clean that up. Let's go. Let's go back and check out the Hakka's pushing in this really nicely. And Zero Tools are moving back up. Have a nice mid-bot rotation here. Noto. Garrosh really looking for a flip here. Well, I guess that's what Garrosh does. I guess that's what Garrosh does. I guess that's what he does. <laughs> All right, Shrine phase is started. Both teams about the same level. Actually, almost exactly the same level. And Kalthos goes down in the middle, and I missed it. But I'm sure is that Johanna gets slipped and taking some cannon shots, but her conversion goes down. And Zeratul is able to get the kill. She is able to get the kill. And 1v1, but Kalthos is going to be back soon this early game. Hanzo's picking up this Shrine down here. So it looks like... And Samia is going to be able to get the Oh, and the interruption from Raynor. A very nice interruption there. Looks like they're going to try to make a move in on this altar here, but Gina is a little behind the other three that are rotating up. Raynor's got to watch out for doing it. And then we're back. Jamster is taking a little bit of damage from the girls. Is he able to get out there? Does he have a tongue? Does he have a Yoshi tongue? And he's able to walk away, he's talked his essence, and Kibeko is in the back going up to that Malfurion, but he's not able to get the whole thing. Jaina going on over this uh, garage here, not able to get a kill, but they're able to get a kill on Raynor, and they grabbed their altar over here. So, currently right now, it's 36 to 32, Moto in the lead. And kills are 2 to 1. And interestingly enough, actually, Insomnia has the lead, level lead just by a little bit, and rotating back onto these camps, um, picking them up right away. And looks like Garrosh is maybe going to, no, I thought he was going to sneak over there and try to grab, or try to find somebody in the bush there, but decided against it. <laughs> what sound does the Yoshi talk make? Well... I can't do it on command. I can't do these things on command. You have to just wait for them to naturally occur. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm sure it will happen again. As the Hakka is in this game. Alright, so these pumpkins are actually pushing in here, but I'm sure they're gonna clean them up. Jaina gets flipped, but the blizzard goes down. Not able to walk away from that one, and Malfurion is getting punished here in the back by the Zero Tool in a two for zero here on the side of Moto. And oh, we're not taking a lot of fire damage, but he is okay and able to clear these pumpkins up. And yeah, they have about eight be seconds swift, before Malfurion's back, so it doesn't Do look like they're going to be able to get any of these. The altars before you bow now, now what? <laughs> what is that, Jason? <laughs> I don't even know how to how to make that sound. Alright, Johanna is taking a lot of damage and she might be tanky, but she's not tanky enough to take on four people. 
Alright. Um, Tahaka was doing a really great job in the top lane, though. So they're about half a level down, but uh, looks like Moto is going to be able to get the first game of. or first. first level 10. When we have a break, I'll I will sing you a Yoshi story song if you guys remember that from N64. All right, um, I don't actually remember what it was, but me and my sister always said it was, um, I like apples. <laughs> Dahaka, Dahaka, babe, you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time there. Um, Moto is rotating as a, as a, rotating really, really, really tightly together. Um, but I'm hopeful because as we learned in the last game, um, Insomnia was able to kind of switch up their play, get a grip on what, what was going on on the other team and able to turn it around. So they're able to grab these pumpkins. I'm gonna have to find that song for you guys. Like, you couldn't really tell what the Yoshis were saying, but me and my sister interpreted as uh, bananas. Lay claim to the <laughs> altars. Do not disappoint me. <laughs> All right. Battle beginning, and um, actually, the battle ending, results. considering that they both Fire just grabbed the their grave. own altar there and backed away. So, this is a good as opportunity as any to look at our talents. So, on Insomnia's side, we have Water Elemental from Jaina. Very good. I like it. This is Elusia. We have Blessed Shield from Johanna. We have a question mark from Malfurion. We have Isolation from Dahaka. And we have Rainer's Raider from Rainer. On the red team, Moto, we have Sound Barrier from Lucio, Void Prison from Zeratul, Dragon's Arrow from Hanzo, and another question mark from Kalpas, and Warlord Challenge. Um, actually, I'm kind of interested to see what talents the Kalpas is going to throw. Come down for Water Elemental and able to get a lot of damage off of the Fear Rush. Dragon's Arrow goes down, pop, uh, break down goes down. And I actually don't know if we really needed to break it down there, considering that the insomnia was it was washed back away. Kalpas gets thrown into the Dahaka Dahaka Burrows. I think he may have already popped his answers in. And I guess we get our answer as to what talent Kalpas went, because he went Pyroblast and a giant fireball of death flew into the face of Dahaka. And that cute little Yoshi went wah wah wah. And is now a fried Yoshi. It's like in Yoshi's story, when the Yoshis die and they get, like, taken away by this terrifying demon into, like, this castle. It's really creepy and sad. <laughs> We're just gonna be talking about Yoshi's story. Hey, thanks for the follow! Alright. And Malfurion still the has not taken his talent. Oh, there he goes, he went Twilight Dream. Uh, Void Prison going down on the Rainer, er, wait, going down on the back of Jaina. Garrosh taking a lot of damage, he is isolated, so he can't see right now. I really, 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 really hate that feeling of not being able to see in the middle of the battle. Water Elemental poking, doing nice poke damage here. Jaina trying to channel the altar in the back. Garrosh going down, taking way too much damage up there in front. And it looks like they're going to have to back away. Kelpin's getting some convection damage in there. <laughs> to the grave Depends on what color Yoshi you're playing. Whether it's fight or it's uh, white meat or red meat. <laughs> Alright. And um, it is 12 to 13, but uh, Insomnia is looking to be aggressive, which I love. I love when teams are aggressive when another person is down on the other team. Don't be scared. Don't be scared of things. Just be confident. Always be confident. Alright. Zero Tools coming up top, clearing this lane. Tahaka going middle, doing that there. Pumpkins pushing in the bottom here. And um, actually, we don't have any, anything down here. Structure wise, both teams are pretty equal. 
Here you can socialize it. Now we have 28 to 20 in tower shops. Next next phase is going to be double top and one bottom. Alright, Wesley Shield comes down, Dragon Nails comes down, Jane is taking a lot of damage in the back here, but silence goes off on the team, forcing them to retreat. I was going to mention this earlier, but I liked to silence pick from the Valkyrian, especially because of the Zeratul diving, the Garrosh flipping, and um, the Lucio. Getting a silence off on any of those guys is is really great protection. The old is rising. Also, the silence um, after the blessed, blessed shields, I like that. I, I I don't play a lot of Malfurion, but I do like the Twilight Dream with against that comp. For sure. Okay, Johanna gets flipped, but she pops her unstoppable. Blizzard and Luke go down, but not for hitting there. Uh, Pyroblast going down on the Malfurion. I think he's going to be just fine. He's at 200 health, actually. But he's going to have to back away, therefore. He's going to have to hard, which is not opportune, considering this shrine has just popped here. Water Elemental goes down, getting poke damage on the Garrosh. And Jaina is in the not a very nice position. Void Prison goes down. And Kalthos is going to have a nice game check follow up. Oh, I didn't even need it. Uh, Garrosh is silenced, but it looks like Insomnia is going to have to back away from this shrine here. I was a little worried about the Malfurion um, needing some... Taking that much damage before the shrine phase started. But not all was lost. They were able to grab the top left shrine. So 24 to 12. And like we all know, this is a comeback map. If there ever was any comeback, the Hanzo poke is giving you anxiety. <laughs> Why is the Hanzo poke giving you anxiety? Actually, what did Hanzo go? He went Scatter Arrow. Heroes, again. I have opened a tunnel near I like Scatter Arrow. To the battleground center. If you can hit Use it. it well. I personally what? prefer redemption. I, mean, I, knew I, could I do especially that. prefer redemption I against my as well. the team. Yeah, this is heroic. Alright, you close down. Honestly, the uh, water elemental is uh, what's coming in. I, I will tell you a story after after this game is done about the Pyroblast and watching a game with Pyroblast. Honestly, if I'd have to give a shout out, I'd have to give it to the tanks. The tanks have been doing a superb job. All right, we have only got one altar. Oh, <laughs> I see. <laughs> I do have to admit, being the Hanzo that kills from a random bounce feels pretty awesome. Almost as awesome as a ran a an owl kill from Tyrande. Alright, so we've got one shrine, both teams 16 versus 16. This really is anyone's game, it's how we do. Alright, Water Elemental goes down. Johanna gets, oh no, that's Dehaka. Dehaka gets left, but he uses his burrow. It'll throw down there. Zeratul taking a lot of damage. Pyroblast goes out on the Dehaka, but uh, he's big, he's a big, he's a big, tough uh, Yoshi. He's able to just take that damage and walk away. And looks like they're going to try to retreat here. Zeratul going after the Jaina in the back, but he's not able to get much. Twilight Dream goes down onto no one, but uh, they got, they got the shrine. So, may have lost the battle, but they won that particular war. And I need to stop using that line because it's going to get repetitive and I like being different. Alright, roots go down. Uh, Blizzard on top of the roots. Pat the bomb! The bomb! Don't stand next to each other when you have the bomb on you, people! Walk the other way! Alright. Uh, they're able to get that fort. 
But Rainer is saying, Rainer wants to do a little chase here. You know, when you just they decide to walk away, I think their best interest will be getting this back as soon as possible. And uh, Moto over here is going for their company and they will try to get some points while they can. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I personally don't like Kelfast. He's fine, I just think other mages are better. Bombs are friends. <laughs> Not free. No. I literally watched as somebody like killed his teammate because I put a bomb on them and then they walked next to him. And just like, you walk away from each other. Why do you want to stand next to someone on fire? Don't do it. Trying to, they're very aggressively trying to push these pumpkins in here. And we do have an altar on the bottom. Zero's looks heroes. like it's gonna pick this up, no problem. And they're going to get five shots off of this, actually. You. <laughs> Destroy the Raven Lord. I think the thing that really just gets me the most is the fact that it the fact that I was able to do that, I like. Um, hold on. All right, Dragon Arrow goes down onto that Malfurion, and he he did pop his Twilight Dream, but it got interrupted, so it was not able to go off. Jaina's Ice Block is down. KT going in for that kill there, Pyroblast on the Jaina, and she just used her Ice Block, so she is going to have a slow, fiery death. And this is not looking good for the. Blue team. It looks like they're going to grab these pumpkins here. Get another, possibly get another three points if they can escort these pumpkins to the ball. Usually it's Cinderella getting escorted to the ball, but this time it's the pumpkins. And uh, they actually have no interest in helping these pumpkins get, get home. Makes me kind of sad. These pumpkins. I mean... The fact that I know who wins makes me really actually more interested in, in the end of this game. Uh, instead of escorting the pumpkins to the ball, they went for the boss, the Headless Horseman here. I'm not cheating! I personally would not, I would prefer to not know how the game ends, okay? <laughs> Ooh, that was a really nice scatter arrow from the Hanzo. Very good poke damage. Uh, Zeratul coming in here. Roots go down. Zeratul creep in the back. Just a little, like, poke here. Lucio's trying to get that. Oh, the silence down onto the Zeratul. And he is lights out on the Zeratul. Garrosh taking a lot of damage here. And uh, Insomnia is putting up a heck of a fight. They are not willing to go down. And the garage, or uh, wait, yeah, the garage goes down, and they're able to channel this altar. They have a long way to go to get back into this game, but on this map, that is the right step in the right direction. Able to grab these pumpkins, maybe grab their own fort here. They have about a good 35 seconds in order to do something. Try to grab their What's fort, this? their fort back. Has left the battle. Oh no, we have more disconnects. Hanzo is gone. Okay, it looks like he's back. Destroyed a fort. Yes, I actually was going to make a comment about that, but I'm trying really hard not to say things like that during cast time. I personally always take ignite, but that's also because I can land my I can land combos. Boom, boom, boom. Ignite deals so much damage too. Alright, Zeratul kind of looking in the back here. Um, but he gets spotted. Nice bush check. Bush check from the Malfurion. Alright, so they were able to get their get their fort back, which is a step in the right direction. Now they're able to get these pumpkins and push them in. Yeah, 
I mean, it's fine. All right, so, um, this is kind of a, for for Moto, they're able to give this up and they'll be fine, but for Insomnia, they need to take this battle. They need to be aggressive here. All right, uh, KT is taking a lot of damage. Uh, Dehaka was able to channel theirs in the back. That's very good. Good start. They gotta keep spread out so that Void Prison is not able to get them. Pyroblast goes down on the Johanna, which is an interesting choice. Um, taking a lot of damage from the clear, but she has... Dragon's Arrow goes down, and people in the back line... Reyna is trying to channel it. There's was in the back by himself. Got a Void Prison on all of them, but no one was there and able to follow up, so he just goes down. They just took a nice little nap there. And Rainer on Rainer French is able to channel this altar. Johanna taking some damage and she's at 60 HP. You have done well here. Wow. That was a good void prison, but unfortunately you have to have some follow-up for those void prison. Otherwise it's just them taking a nap. Hey. You don't know. You don't know. Alright, I like this. And they were able to get this. They were able to get this bottom, so they are making a really, really good comeback here. And this is why I love this map in particular, is that you are never down until until those cameras hit your core and it goes to zero. Alright, so we're starting to make the rotation here, and Dehaka has been pushing this top lane out, so this one has actually started to take some damage, and they might be able to, no, Moto's able to get their bottom one down, and I didn't see if any of those pumpkins went in, it doesn't look like it, because they're still at eight, uh, they do have to wait for this to respawn, so it looks like they're starting to make the kind of loopity loop here, and Boss has about ten seconds, actually, until it responds, and it's 5v5 though, so we'll see if they want to take this. If, if they see them rotate up or down, they're able the to take the boss here. And they do see them rotate down, so they do start the boss. And they have a good 20 seconds until those altars spawn, so they have plenty of time to do this. Now, the next, now, they put themselves in a position. Don't, no, no one grab the point! <laughs> oh, I'm so glad Rainer saw that before Dehaka burrowed down there. <laughs> Alright, Dragon Arrow goes down, and Dehaka actually went down, which is not a good <laughs> sign. But, Raynor was able to get the shots on the core! They let that slip! Oh my gosh, that must feel awful. Oh, that is 